how far we go down the line, we go as far as is needed. You see that we attacked also EA Sports because we think that they are uh, abusing the rights of players, that they are not being bought from clubs and the club doesn't owe them. It is of letting people also see that it is not only the football world and the game on the field, but everything that is around it that is important, you know? Well, well Mino, can I ask you about the EA Sports situation? And this is, this is obviously with players' image rights, and I think a lot of people would look at that and think, well, it is strange that there's all these world-famous players and there's many thousands of different players whose images are there in the game, and I'm guessing that they don't get anything from it. But then the other way of looking at it is if they did, how would the game actually go ahead anyway? Well, we think that, for example, the image rights that are being, uh, let's say, not uh, maybe abuse is the wrong word. I'm sorry for my English. I it's think okay. that it's maybe not appropriate in, 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 to use that word as abuse, but let's say they're not used rightly. They can be a foundation for small players also to develop. They can yep. be a foundation also for clubs, you know. It is the same, in the same discussion is that it is very strange that in a lot of countries, and I'm not sure that that is in England is the case, but in a lot of countries, every organization can put a betting system on the game without right. having to pay taxes, without having to pay players or clubs, you know, for the venue. You understand what I mean? So some, some countries now are moving up to say, okay, you know what, we're going to tax that, uh, that betting rights, you know, so that we can put that money back into the game. Because right. it's, it's a source of income for clubs that until today was not considered, but where everybody knows is around billions. So that is a sustainable uh, in financial interest for clubs. And we see that how stronger the clubs is, how better the youth department is, how better the first team is. That's the interest that we have for our players. And, and do you think that the how famous the player is would get a different rate to maybe a smaller player that would be playing in a smaller club and it would work, work I, that I, way? I think for sure that we need to discuss about a logarithm or about a system, how that would work. Yes, I think that for sure that is that there can be a fix and then maybe a variable, you know. But until now, also there, Paul, we are not sitting on the table with the people that decide that things. And that's very strange, you know. Mm -hmm. We sit on the table and say, okay, how can we go about to do this kind of things? That would be a good, let's say, division and can make everybody happy. Clubs, smaller players, big players. Because the interest of the rolling game, let I say, is that small players become big players. That's everybody's interest. Could you play, could you pull one of your players out if you wanted to? I mean, do you have the right to be able to say, you know, I don't want Zlatan to be in FIFA 2022? I think we can. They think they don't. They can't, we can't. But I think we can. Yeah. Would it come to that, though, Mino? Because we, there is a difference in in the collective rights that they said that they bought, and they buy collective rights from clubs that say that they have it, but they use them on an individual basis. And in most countries, this is forbidden. And I think that in, for example, the EA game of the FIFA, there is a betting component. And in some countries, in America themselves, they're already being, uh, they lost several cases because there is, a betting, uh, there is a betting component in it where they hook up the, the young players of the game, you know, by sure. handing them these cards. You know, if you want to buy a Paul Pogba card or a Slavon Ibrimic card, you have to pay a certain amount but they send you 10 cards and you need to be happy if in one of those 10 cards is one of the players that you wanted, you know? So there's a betting component, a lottery in that, in that, in that game. And that's not what this game should be about, you know? And uh, so, yeah, I think that the game is masked with things that is not telling them. And I, sure. think, I think that's wrong. So you don't think it's about kids that can just go out and then they could just get the game and then play as their favorite player? No, no, no. Paul, today, everything that has to do with data is not anymore an innocent thing. Our kids go outside and they play and that's it. We know that. And that's the same for Instagram, Facebook, or all these big platforms. And that's for sure also in the EA Sport game. They know exactly how to target it. And again, last week, there was already some scandals of, of in the company itself, people that messed with the, the, the cards and the things that they, that they have to sell. So it is, it's a serious betting game inside sure. of the game. And it is a serious problem of how to divide their revenues. Strangely enough, I've been contacted by a lot of clubs, but a lot of clubs 
that says, finally, we have a common interest because obviously you can understand that this is not only an interest for the players, eh? this is an interest also for the clubs. This is, uh, and we did touch on this just now, and this is agent regulations. Now, do you feel that you're being targeted here? Do you feel like you're getting a bad rap and then FIFA are just taking it all out on you guys? Yes. Yes. Again, like I told you in the beginning of our talk, I think that they have to take away the attention from their own problems. Don't forget that we are talking about uh, an organization that has, I think, 15 people of them in jail in the U.S. Mm -hmm. for corruption and for other things. And strangely enough, if you look at the history of FIFA of the last 20 years, it was not only one scandal. So it was not, oh, okay, you know, it happens one time, there were four or five rotten apples in the basket and that's it, we cleaned it. No, it is a systematically problem in FIFA. So if it's a systematic problem in FIFA, then we can almost say that it is, it is their way of doing things in FIFA. So they needed a scapegoat, they needed a black ski sheep, and we were the ones. You know, and uh, that's okay, but we don't uh, we don't want to give up without a fight. And sure, what well, what is it they're actually? I mean, simply, what are they asking you to do that you're so unhappy about? Which is well, changed. Actually, what they're asking us to do is not to represent our players anymore in a proper way. That's what they're asking us to do. Which means? Well, which means that players cannot have the proper representation on the proper way. It is so strange that one of their uh, members uh, that is on the part of the players, let's say the FIFPRO, the worldwide agency for, uh, uh, let's say, for their, their the union, is against the regulations because it weakens the position of the players. And that's sure. one of the most important things to do it. Then after that, of course, they make it in a way that it is almost unworkable what they want to do because it's it's people that never, you know, never did a transfer that they actually don't know what our work is and what our job is or what we do and why are we needed or not needed. They just hear, okay, you know what, we need to regulate these people and it's people that even don't live in Europe that have, so I, sure. I, I doubt that some of these people have ever seen football. Yeah. I think that's been the way in football for a long time though, hasn't it? I mean, either people it, actually don't it, actually yeah. like football or understand football. Yeah, yeah, they are just there because it's it's a job of honor or it's a way of having power in their own in their own country, you know. And it's a political job, and uh, you know, and and they, they they come up with regulations that you really think and you say, what the hell? Who found out these regulations? Who wrote them? Uh, a lot of the clubs that we are uh, engaged in and that talk to us, I mean, you know, it's incredible, but we know we cannot fight it because it's a fight without a battle. So that's why I say. This should be something that FIFA should not even regulate. FIFA is there only to, let's say, try to organize, organize a world championship. And even in that, they are very bad. So <laughs> okay. they, yeah, should, yeah, yeah. they should be careful about that. And I think in England, they know how bad they are in organizing in a proper and transparent way a world championship. Sure. Finally, you know, I've got to ask you, when it comes to you and what you do and your work, uh, the amount of people that don't really know what happens with a football agent, is it, is it 24 hours a day? Are you on the phone to your players all the time? Are you always looking for deals? What, what is a typical day for you, if there is such a thing? Yeah, I think that I'm 24 hours available. I wouldn't say I'm, I'm, I'm not a victim. I wouldn't say I'm 24 hours a day on the telephone, but I'm available 24 hours a day for my players. And yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's, what, what is it? It's, it's, I would see it like, I want to be. I want to be there. There. I want to be standing next to them, behind them, and in front of them in their, in their, let's say, voyage in their travel, uh, for the career. And uh, uh, yeah. See, I guess that's the thing that many people accuse agents of is the fact that they can make so much money off of players and to move them along quickly it is in their best interest. But you are all about the career for the player, I guess. Yes, I, I myself, I am, and the people that I know, my colleagues. We are more worried about the career of the player than our of ourselves. And yes, it's also an industry where money rolls. And yes, of course, if, if you if, if you are the best agent of an actor, of course you don't have a poor job, and of course you make uh, decent money because that's that's the, that's the outcome of your client, you know. But that's not what it is about. It's the will. At least I started, and I still am. That is the will to to protect the young players and to to have their the honor to to bring them to to fulfill their dreams. That's at least my thing is like that.
And listen, do you have a favourite team or do you just support the clubs of the players that you uh, that you actually have in different clubs? My favourite teams are always the small clubs because I'm a dreamer. I like when the small clubs beat the big clubs, you know, because that's I think that's the nice thing of football and that's the nice thing of, the, of life when nothing is written in stone, you understand what I mean? So that everything is possible. That's the real dream. You know, Leicester was a real dream, in my opinion. The winning of the of the of the Premier League, and of course I I support the career of my players, so I'm always happy when my players uh, win and have success. But in general, I would always be uh, in favour of the small teams that beat the big teams. Sounds a bit like a fight against FIFA there. It sounds a little <laughs> bit possibly for, like that. For, for sure, <laughs> that's why. That's but for, I wouldn't say you're so small, Mino. I wouldn't say you're so I'm, small. I'm not, I'm not small. I don't believe in myself I'm small. But if you have to handle an organization as FIFA, then you're really small. You have to understand that this is people that for no reason whatsoever, Paul, are invited by head of states. Can you imagine why a head of state should invite the president of FIFA? What the hell? What the hell did he do? for the yeah, world yeah. to be invited by a head of state. Can you imagine that FIFA always asks in, during a, a World Cup that they don't pay taxes in the country where they organize the venue? Sure. It, 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 it's ridiculous for words, or that they want to have a preferred highway to move from one side to the other with their, with their uh, members of the board. Well, not, not even head of states get what they get. So yeah. You're talking about the colors that people don't even know what they're talking about, you know. And before we finish, will it change? Will it change, do you think, FIFA? We've already seen one change, and now, obviously, that's not enough. So no, going forward, do you think there'll be a change? It will change. It will change because I believe in justice, and I think that justice at the end will always prevail. So it will change. Mino, I've really enjoyed speaking to you. Thank you so much. for. I've been looking at your photocopier in the back just to see if I recognize any names coming through, but there's nothing there yet. So you keep me updated. <laughs> Thank you. I will do that. <laughs> Thank and you. Keep strong. Keep strong. We are proud of England. We're seeing that everything is going good in England with COVID. So you're an example for everybody. And I hope England soon gets open again and gets public into the stadiums. And as always, England was a little bit, uh, you know, opening the way for, for a lot of things in, in football. You know, new stadiums, new, new hospitality. And that's one of the reasons that the Premier League is one of the strongest in the world. So we are looking at you and uh, hopefully we can take uh, everybody there as an example.